We are back on the beautiful 1954 Chevy. I get my wheels back. We get some nice brand new white walls for it. I also throw the new carb on, let it run for a little bit. And as always, this 54 surprises me again. Let's get going. The 54 Chevy has been on jack stands for over a week. It's time to go steal my wheels back from my dad. Let's go. All right. I'm gonna run in and out real quick because he might be home for his lunch break. I'm not sure. We're gonna make this happen real fast. So a uh, super cool thing happened. I ran up to his house. I backed up to his garage and my camera was dead. So I was gonna just kind of come back, recharge it, but I was like, I'm not doing all that for you know a video. Good news is I got him stolen back. I already got the two rear ones put on. I'm getting ready to put the two front ones on. And I also went ahead and ordered some new tires for these because the tires keep going flat. And I told him, I said, once it has new tires on them, they're mine again. That's, you know, I mean, that's just the law of stealing things back and forth. Whenever I get the wheels put back on, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it here in the garage. We'll have it next to the Mustang. We'll start going through some of the parts we got. I got a bunch of parts in stock. Hopefully we'll start putting them on and see if we can't get this old girl running. Check her out. She is inside and ready to start getting worked on. I'm excited about it. I got all my brake stuff, brake lines, brake shoes, all new master cylinders, all that fun stuff. Got a brand new carburetor. Some people, when I said I was getting a new carburetor, they thought I was buying like some Chinese junk. No, no, this is an actual OEM Rochester style carburetor. So we're going to put that on there and have some fun. I'm going to use this as my run tank for now. Um, the gas tank looks good. I went ahead and got some water in that and got it cleaned out. I didn't see any leaks at all, which is very good. It didn't look like the gas that was in it. It looked like it didn't have much gas in it, which is nice. When there's a lot of gas in it, it just gets real shitty. I hose that out with water. It looks good. So I'm hoping the gas tank will work. But for now, we'll just put the carb on and then run it with this. Very, very exciting. Got a lot of parts. My lowering kit hasn't came in yet, but it should be here any day. So... Let's get to playing with her. Check it out, got a little sidetracked. I ordered these tires about, I don't know, four or five days ago. They told me it was gonna take a week to get in. They ended up showing up a little bit early. So check them out. Me and my dad, we have an arrangement. If you put new tires on the rims, they are yours. They can't be stolen. I'm not gonna spend $500 on tires and then have him go steal them. So we got some little white walls. Let me show you real quick. Heck them out. I got the little white wall, not going too crazy. The big three inch white wall is like, I don't know, $400 a tire. I'm not doing all that. So I like them. We'll sand them down and paint them. Uh, I'm going to order some hubcaps today. So they'll be in pretty quick. I just wanted to show you. Very, very happy. I love new white walls. They look so good. Even the little whites just look bitching. Let's throw on this new carburetor and see if we can get the old girl running a little bit better. And whenever I finally get it running, we're gonna actually run for longer than 10 seconds. I'm gonna throw it in gear. I don't wanna make sure, you know, everything moves like it should before we get too crazy. Cause if I throw it in gear and realize the rear ends broke or the transmission's junk, obviously we need to pivot <laughs> the build point and see if we need to change something. So let's do all that. Okay, I got it hooked up. It's actually leaking really bad, which is awesome. The base I have, the base that came with the new one doesn't match this intake. So I had to change that out a little bit. So it's leaking like hell, not very happy about it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'm gonna have to buy another one or send this one back because they were too stupid to give me the right one. But I do have some gas in it and it looks like it is actually holding gas. Other than leaking everywhere, it is holding, so let's see what happens. Probably helps now. I'm just saying maybe on this. It maybe helps to hook up the battery. Oh, shit. Oh, that's... Oh, that's from the gas tank. My fuel pump works. Is that gas or water? Old gas and water because I put water in the gas tank. That's hilarious. Get it out of there. <laughs> Holy shit! Whoa, what happened? What happened? 
Did we run out of gas already? I'm not running out of gas. Come on. still running with it being unplugged oh my gosh my alternator works i unplugged the battery it was still running it didn't unhook until i undid the coil wire that means my alternator is actually working holy shit i was not expecting that at all first thing we're gonna do is open up a uh, door because it is very smoky in here now the exhaust actually works it's smoking out of the exhaust which is cool usually that's just all gone you just have to redo it but I think it's actually still working, but I'm gonna get it running again, throw it in gear, and we'll see if these back wheels don't move. So before I throw it in gear, here's a problem I just realized. I got nothing. This was completely stuck to the ground. I pulled it out and I can't even push it back in. Oof. So my clutch is obviously bad or rusted solid or something. So that's gonna have to be fixed. The good news is, seems like the shifting is okay. First, second, yeah, no. I think it's reverse, first, second, fourth, maybe. I don't know, could be wrong on the column shifts, but actually, let me double check here. Make sure this is working. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, okay, so column shifting is working, but not in love that I can't grab the clutch. Maybe I'll just start it in gear. So then it's not like a jam. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll get it started in neutral and then I'll try and throw it in gear. If it gives me any problems, I'm going to turn it right off though. So I think what I'm gonna do now is fill the radiator up with water. I wanna see if it holds fluid or not. I haven't been running the engine long enough to really need radiator fluid. You know, I've only been running it for like 10 seconds here and there. But I would like to fill it up with water, see if, you know, we got any leaks or if the water pump needs work or any of that. I think it'd probably be good to do that now because if I need to order one or get a new one, it's now's the time. I don't think I'm gonna tackle the clutch stuff this episode, but I might try and tackle it next episode. Um, I've never put a clutch in one of these with the, you know, torque tube drive shaft. So I think it might be a big pain in the ass, <laughs> but I'm gonna dig into that in the next one. So let's throw some water in this and uh, see if she works. Look at it. It's been full for about 10 minutes. No leaks. <laughs> it means the radiator's good. Now, it doesn't mean that anything else is good, but that's pretty cool. Got a good original 1954 radiator. So, I'm going to fire it up now. We'll start getting that water moving, and we'll see if we have any leaks or not. This whole electrical system still works. 
I got my voltmeter on my dash working. That is absolutely amazing. I am so surprised. I've never seen that. I am worried that our water pump isn't doing very good. So I'm gonna pop this hose off and I'm gonna see if there is a um, thermostat in there because they can rust solid. So I'm gonna pull that open real quick and so we'll see. Cause I feel like I should have a lot more water moving than I am. So I pulled the uh, thermostat out and a bunch of water came out and I said, you know what, I'm gonna fire it up and I'm just gonna see how good the water pump is working. That was very dumb because it's working very well. It shot up about this high. You can see the water everywhere now, all the way going out the door. Uh, so the water pump is working, which is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead, I filled it back up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. I wanna make sure everything's running good. I know I need a new gasket for this top amount. Really, really happy with how everything is running. I'm very excited. I know I need to fix the carburetor issue that I have, the wrong bottom. But uh, other than like a couple little gaskets, I'm not going to touch this motor again for a while. She is running perfect. It's doing very well. I'm so excited. Cannot believe all Nader's working and all this shit. So I'm going to probably run it one more time now, double check for leaks, and then uh, call it done. We got a bunch of brake stuff we're gonna start on. My lowering kit came today, but they forgot the back. But I do have the front. Oh yeah, baby. Got some lowered coils, really excited. And then I got the shocks for them too. Got the uh, lowered shocks as well. So really, really happy about that. I got three inch block kit for the rear as well. So it's gonna be a three inch drop. Super, super exciting. But we're gonna run this and then Probably start digging into the brakes. Also, I need to know how to do the clutch. Anybody that's ever done a clutch on a closed drive shaft 49 to 54 Chevy, please let me know how hard it is to change the clutch. I've never done one. I've converted these before to a open drive shaft. It's a lot easier to work on and whatnot. Also, you can get better gear ratios out of the rear end. I don't wanna do that if I don't have to, cause I'd have to find a three speed transmission and all that fun stuff. I'd rather just use this if I can. Let me know how much of a pain in the ass it is to change a clutch in one of these. Cause yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. And I'd rather, you know, somebody tell me that's actually done it before. Uh, I can get on Google and kind of see what it is. But uh, if anybody's actually done it themselves, uh, leave a comment. Let me know how much of a pain in the ass it is. But let's fire up. One more time, probably the last time for a while, but let's fire her up. I'm so excited how nice it's starting. I will say that. <laughs> So now that we know the motor is good and everything is working there, it's time to go work on the brakes. I have every single thing I need for brakes, brake lines, everything. I mean, I'll make the lines, but I mean, I got master cylinder, wheel cylinders, everything. Oh, I had to get Tough Girl out. That's my seven pound sledgehammer that is just beautiful. One good thing about the only good thing, when you have a rusty floor <laughs> on one of these where the brake master cylinder is in the frame, is we can just cut all this out and work on it because it's got to get cut out anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and cut probably up to here. Well, I don't know. That's not as bad as I thought. Probably just cut around it for now and um, see if we can get it all out. It is a pain in the butt to do. It's Even when you cut this out, it's not the easiest job in the world. But 
Yeah, we're gonna do that real quick. I, what's funny is the lines look okay, but I don't really trust, you know, 75 year old brake lines. So we'll go ahead and change them anyway, but it is kind of amazing how nice they are. But I don't know, let's cut some shit. So I actually had to cut these off. Normally you can just unbolt them. These stay on the master cylinder, but your pedals, they just bolt in. But since this is locked up solid and I can't move it, I actually had to cut the pedals off. Where did I put them? I actually had to cut the pedals off. And now that I can unbolt it, I'll unbolt it and actually weld it back on. But that's the only way I could get it out. I fought with it for about 30 minutes and I just said, screw it. I'll just TIG weld those back. But this is locked solid. And the good news about that is my clutch might not be bad after all because it kind of seems like it's trying to push. I don't know. It, it It's kind of trying to push. So maybe the clutch isn't bad. I think we need to get our master cylinder put on and then we can really find out for sure. So let's break this down. So, bad news, these are just seized in there. You can take this bolt off and kind of get some lube down in there, and then they'll slide out, but it is just, everything is just seized. I beat on this for like 20 minutes and just now barely got it to break loose. So, I'm not very happy about all this. I'm going to go ahead and just order the new pieces. They're literally six bucks each, and that's not the only bad thing that sucks. Um, I got to looking at the brake master cylinders, started messing with the fronts. I got the right fronts. I don't have the right rears, so <laughs> it looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and order some parts to continue on this thing anyway. I'm also still waiting on the rear uh, lowering kit, so we're going to go ahead and just end the episode here. I'm going to order some new pins. I'll probably play with it a little bit longer, but either way, I need new rear cylinders, and I'll probably go ahead and just order these new pins since they're not very expensive. So we're going to have to go ahead and end it here. It's Friday. I try and get this out on Sundays now. This is my Sunday build now, basically. I don't think that's going to happen with me needing to order parts so we're gonna go ahead and end it here so thanks for watching love you thank you guys very much for watching i am very excited to hear it run especially considering i had to let it run for about 10 minutes i was surprised that the alternator was still good it seems like most of my gauges are still working i could not believe that and i also the fact that like the fuel line is still good the fuel pump is actually pumping all that stuff i was just planning on fixing planning on replacing rather and even my brake lines looked like they still had fluid in them. I'm going to replace those just because why would you run a 70-year-old brake line? But the fact that they're still nice is actually very surprising to me. I mean, this thing sat in mud. It was <laughs> The wheels were sunk in mud, and everything just seems to be really nice, and I'm very, very happy with it. It sucks I had to stop and wait on some parts, but... Anybody that's ordering stuff right now, you know that shipping is kind of wonky. But I should have all those parts in by the time I start on the next video. Next video, I would like to have the brakes done, and I would like to be able to throw it in gear and actually drive it. I want it to go forward and backward. So the next video is going to be pretty exciting, so stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff they tell you at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace! <laughs>